strip it and says, for me, it's naked, it's nothing. They made that place what it is. But they made sure that we never remember that we took Africa off our mind. Suppose Africa came back on our mind and we placed it there. Not in the way they put it there, but the way the most high and the spirit of God and the spirit of our ancestors are shaking us up today. That's what this year returns on. When they say this is a year of prophecy and the point of years is up, we don't joke with prophecy. It's not just our incentive. The ancestors are crying out. Get up and do what needs to be done. Remember the sacrifice we made for human beings. They could have chose to die right here. They could have chose to die in these dungeons. They could have chose to jump over those walls. They could have chose to feed themselves in shops. But they chose to live so we can be. We're here because of their sacrifice. That's what time it is. That's what time it is in prophetical history. Not talking about the calendar. Not talking about our watch. That's what time it is in prophetical history. That's what prophecy is saying. There's nothing more. I've heard so much inspiring words, historical content, but this is that infamous law of no return. When our ancestors went through all that they went through, it was going through this door that they were told and that they felt that when they got on those waters, they never seen their ancestral land again. So all that we've been talking about with resilience come together with this door. This is the door of no return. There's a similar door in all these courts around here that ended up marking the exit point. The last exit point that they physically saw, most of them, and leaving this continent. That's right. So when they leave here, they may not remember, we may not remember the village we came from, may not remember the, the family we came from, may not remember the house we came from. But we do know there's some contact spiritually that our ancestors did come through one of these dungeons and did come through one of these doors. And we're going to go through this as they did. But we're going to walk back with their spirit, back to this door of return, which is the real meaning and significance of their resilience and our victory. So we're going to walk through there, we're going to see a little piece on the other side, and then we're going to come back through the door of return. Okay. You're saying the, the, head of, the head of the Christian church, Pope Nicholas at the time, that's who instituted the, the, the systemic. The That's right, the legalization, because you have to remember they had just come from under 700 years rulership of the Moors. And in 1492, mm -hmm. we are taught that 1492 was relevant to Columbus discovering America. But 1492 is relevant to the last African ruler ruling any territory in Europe, meaning we felt Granada fell, Madrid had fell, and so Seville had fell, and so the last African king handed over to a Christian ruler, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. And that was in 1492. And immediately they handed power over to the Pope. And that made Christians rule Europe again. And they expelled all the Moors. And with that, they started the expedition down into West Africa. And that culminated in the Pope actually criminalizing being African. If you were found to be an African and you were not Christian, you could be murdered.